Well, I'm going to start, and I will probably have a few people joining us afterwards. Um, my name is Chris O'Brien. I'm Associate Director of Admissions, and you are at an admitted student virtual panel. Uh, tonight's theme, uh, well, the title may be intrigued you. It's Bean Pot to Mud Stuff, right? It's about organizations. It's about events and traditions at Boston College. I hope that one of the parts that you're really excited about going to college for is to be a part of these great traditions and these great events and to find the people that you share a lot of interest to with, to find the people that you want to get to know a little bit better, find the, the activities that you've carried with you from home, whether it's your high school or your community, finding your people. Uh, those people may, you know, share exactly what it is that you come from, or they may be completely different than you, but you've always wanted to find these people when you got to college, and this might be the great opportunity to do it. When you join a community like Boston College, we revel in the opportunities that we can get together. We get together on many different levels. We have traditions that are based on athletics. We have traditions that are based on our Jesuit Catholic heritage. We have, we have traditions that are based on the time of year, the day of the week. We have a lot of different things that are going on. And it's important to our students because, you know, the 9,000 students that comprise Boston College, you know, sometimes they can start going their different ways, but it's really the strength of our community that you see up close through these organizations, through the events, and through the traditions that we maintain every year that make our community unique. And I, I imagine that your high schools have these kind of things, and some of the things that you really enjoy about your high school, you hope you can do on a larger level when you come to college. So we're going to talk about those things. Uh, and I brought this like, you know, host of talent and wisdom together for you tonight. And I can't wait to introduce them to you. Uh, so let's do that right away. So I'm going to have you guys introduce yourself according to uh, the, the first alphabetically, the first letter of your uh, first name. So that means Brittany. And Brittany, what I'd like you to do is say who you are and where you're from and then what you study and what year you are at Boston College. And let's hear about a couple of the organizations that you're you're a part of. You know, maybe give us uh, two or three, but give us two or the first two that you're kind of interested in, but then finish with the one that you give the most time, energy, the one that you enjoy working with the most. So let's hear from you, Brittany. Let's get us started. Yeah, so I'm Brittany. Um, I'm a senior here at Boston College, and I'm studying marketing and operations management in the Carroll School of Management. And I have a minor in applied psychology in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. Um, I'm from Naples, Florida. And I do two main things here on campus. My first main thing is working in the student admissions program. So that's why I'm here right now. <laughs> Give tours and panels weekly. Might have seen me if you've been on campus on Thursdays. Um, and then my other main thing that I do on campus is I'm a part of the dance organization of Boston College. So that is, we are the largest dance group on campus and there's about 35 or 40 dancers and we do um, studio dance. So we do like tap, ballet, jazz. We're totally student run. We practice about 10 hours a week and we have a big show in the spring. That's all of our team, all of our dances that we choreograph. And then we also participate in Showdown, which is the large, the like most attended student event on campus. And it's a competition between all of the dance teams and it's in Conti Forum. So the whole like hockey arena gets packed with students. This year, there are like 5,300 students. And it's one of my favorite things about Boston College is my involvement with dance. <laughs> Well, Brittany, before we are going to talk about all these talented dancers and actors and, and uh, you know, uh, musicians at Boston College, but I want to go with something basic and, and talk about the fact that growing up in Florida, you know, and most of your friends probably went to schools in state that have Greek life and, and you know, that structure socially at the school. And that's something that doesn't happen at Boston College. And I think as we start talking about organizations, which are all ways that you create this social network of people uh, at your school, Greek life isn't a factor here. Uh, was that something that you were concerned with coming to Boston College that, you know, so many of your friends are rushing sororities and we don't have that? And would you make friends and would you have any fun? And uh, or is that something that you kind of like about Boston College because Greek life isn't what does it? It's clubs, it's organizations, it's events like this. I, I imagine that even in social media, the first couple of weeks of school, you saw all your friends, you know, rushing and you, you 
or just at Boston College. And that's not what we do at our place. So can you talk a little bit about the lack of Greek, Greek life and how that affects and what, what substitutes for Greek life at Boston College? Yeah, so I, when I was applying places, Greek life really wasn't like a determining factor for me. I wasn't necessarily against it or for it. If it was at a school I went to, maybe I would have joined it. But um, I think the club, the club life and like being so involved on campus is something that a lot of BC students do. And that's something that I found I do. This like in high school, I was really involved with a bunch of clubs. So continuing that into college didn't really create a, a hole in my heart or anything that I wish that I would have had Greek life for because especially like with my dance team, it's like being able to um, get to know people from all different grades, like right as soon as you get to campus, whether that comes to being from being in theater or like a culture club or something like that. I don't think a lack of Greek life has created any hole for me. <laughs> I would imagine that if you want to recreate Greek life in your residence hall, just put up a big banner that says party. <laughs> and if you put a big up banner that says party in your room, I mean, you're going to get the Greek life experience, right? Yeah, I mean, you can definitely get close with like the people in your buildings and have a little living together experience. <laughs> I just want to know what else that banner says behind you. Uh, <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, my knowledge of the alphabet says that Jordan, you're next. So Jordan, I want you to introduce yourself and do the same thing. C give us a couple of the organizations that take up a lot of your time and energy and have allowed you to meet a lot of people at Boston College. Sure. So my name is Jordan Akash and I'm a sophomore from Kingston, Jamaica. I'm double majoring in economics and communication in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences and minoring in accounting for CPAs in the Carroll School of Management. Uh, I'm involved in quite a bit on campus, but I'd say my top three are probably Caribbean Culture Club. Um, and we put on a lot of events throughout the year. Most recently, we just had our Mr. Miss Caribbean pageant. And that was super fun, um, super stressful to plan, but super fun in the end. Um, I'm also part of Presenting Africa to You, or also PATU, which is known, which is Boston's only African and African diaspora dance group. That's been super fun as well, and I feel like I found a second family with the girls. I feel like what I've probably invested most of my time and effort into would be the undergraduate government of Boston College, which I've been involved in since my freshman year, and I'm lucky to be continuing next year. I serve as a class of 24 student assembly rep, which is our fancy word for senator. Um, and in the Senate, I serve as a student life um, committee chair. And so I get to meet with a bunch of amazing administrators, such as those in transportation, dining, facilities, auxiliary services. And I've been able to, I mean, accomplish quite a few things on campus. And that's been probably my greatest achievement here so far. And those are all humble brags. Well done, Jordan. But what I'd like to know too, is you, and I'm sure you could have mentioned five more clubs, maybe even more. Is one of the tougher things about college balancing all these fun things you're doing and actually reading a couple books and studying for a few exams and doing the school part of life is finding that perfect balance between some of your academic obligations and responsibilities and some of these great adventures that you're going on extracurricularly. Is, is, is that important? Does that come with time? Does that take a lot of work to manage it well? How have you done it? If you've done it, like you I mean, maybe you don't do it well, but no, if you've I'm, done it well, out. I'm just no, I'm kidding. How does it work? You sound like my mom. She asked me the same questions. No. So that was definitely something that was very hard to navigate freshman year. And I think I was way more involved then. And this year I kind of had to zero in on, I mean, it was still a lot and I narrow it down as the years go on, but that transition from high school to college in high school, I felt like everything was structured. So, okay, you were in class from eight to three, all the extracurriculars happened maybe from three to five, three to six, then you do your homework, then you go to sleep. And it was the same thing every day, whereas coming to college, you pick your schedule. So maybe on a Monday and a Wednesday, you have class at 10 and 12, and then you're done for the day. But then on a Tuesday and a Thursday, you have classes from nine to two. You know, so you really get to pick your schedule here. There is way more free time than in high school. And that was hard for me to be able to budget that free time, when to find time to go to the library that maybe wasn't super late at night. Um, and I had to do that this year with 
I mean, my main, the main three that I named, which were Patu, UGBC, and Caribbean Culture Club, I just had to make sure that, okay, the same way I had, well, this is always what worked for me. The same way that I had those on my schedule, I would put time for the library in my schedule and time for myself in the schedule because it was a lot to balance the extracurriculars and school on one, but it was also very important to make sure that I was putting aside time for myself so that I could just kind of breathe and get along with it. And I think that was probably the biggest struggle in my transition to college was just making sure that I had that time management, those skills in place, um, because they will get the better of you at times. No, nope. very good point, Jordan. Uh, the extracurricular time, the academic time, and the you time, the Jordan time. The Jordan time. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Uh, okay. So uh, you've seen a lot of hand gestures by our next speaker, uh, we're, but she's been anxiously waiting to uh, introduce herself to you. So again, the same introduction for you. Let's let's hear a little bit about you, Mary. Absolutely. Hello, <laughs> one and all. Uh, my name is Mary Feldman. I'm a junior at BC in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. I'm studying applied psychology and human development and interdisciplinary math and computer science. And I'm from Carlsbad, California. Uh, I can't see you, but hopefully there's some California people in the room or on the recording uh, in days past or future, I suppose. Um, in terms of some of my involvements on campus, I have really benefited from a lot of mentorship opportunities on both sides. Um, here at BC, my two involvements, I spend time doing every single week, but not the most time, I would say. I'm an Ascend lead. Ascend is a program through the Center for Student Formation uh, that hosts weekly reflection groups uh, for first year women. I was not lucky enough to do it my freshman year, but being on the other side, I've greatly enjoyed the conversations I've had with my group and I feel very grateful that I'm a resource to them as well. I'm also a TA uh, for a first year course called Experience Reflection and Action which is a first year class for every single student in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. If you're in Lynch, you'll spend 4.30 to 6 every single Tuesday with every other student in the Lynch School, which is very special and unique to BC. And I've been lucky to be a TA for that class the past two years, take it my freshman year and I'll be an instructor next year. So maybe I'll see some of you in there. Um, but without a doubt, the place I spend most of my time here at BC is with the Boston College Campus Activities Board. If you're a big student government kid in high school or you're involved in planning your prom or anything along those lines, um, the Campus Activities Board outside of UGBC uh, puts on all of the events on campus. As I'm sitting here right now, I was just attending a charcuterie board event that two BC graduates founded a charcuterie board company and I was making a little board. Um, I myself don't like cheese, so it's a little silly, uh, but I think it's awesome how we can bring different BC alum and all sorts of people together through our events. Many of the traditions I'm sure you'll hear about today, like the Christmas tree lighting or mod stock, which is a concert on um, the last day of classes or mud stock, my personal favorite are done through our campus activities board. So maybe you'll get a little taste in the future, whether it be through a charcuterie board or mud all over you on the last day of classes. But um, the campus activities board has definitely been a home for me at BC and I'm grateful that I have a place that I can show up as my full self. You mentioned mentoring and I, I just, I wanna probe at that a little bit because all the people tuning in are seniors in high school and they were the leaders of organizations like you guys are now, and you know, you're, you're mentoring younger students at Boston College, but all these people that are tuning in are gonna be freshmen again. And they're going to hate it. Being a freshman, you know, it's tough at times because you go from the high of being in charge and having this great, you know, position, these great positions in high school. And then you start college and you sort of start from square one. So Mary, like, remember when you were a freshman, is it hard to get started in organizations at Boston College? You know, as a freshman, maybe seniors are very intimidating, but do you hope, do you join these clubs? And did, when you joined clubs, did you find the upper class one were very welcoming and very helpful for you as you were just getting your, your bearings at Boston College. So getting started after being at the top of the mountain in high school, how was it? And, and, and when does it get better that to the point where you can turn around and be that 
you know, helpful people, helpful person to the younger students? Be the big dog. Um, I'll say at BC in the fall semester, there is a student involvement fair with 350 three, I believe it is these days, student organizations lining the entire lawn, throwing free stuff at you, trying to get your email down for their club and this club and the other club and all the clubs. Um, and I think one thing that's special about BC is within many of those, those clubs, they have embedded mentorship programs. Uh, obviously, we all came as high performing superstar students to BC. And I think that transition that you were talking about, Chris, of being the little fish in a big pond after you've been the big dog per se um, is definitely a shift. But I think at BC, our Jesuit values of care of the, her, the whole person and the student run aspect of all of our organizations leads right into that opportunity for underclassmen to meet upperclassmen in a way that is not intimidating. And it um, comes from a place of being a resource and a peer rather than an overlord of some sort. Um, I think BC programs definitely prioritize that, whether it's through a mentorship programming team or Ascend or Freshman League, for example, many of the culture clubs as well have their own mentorship embedded. So the opportunity is definitely out there for you to meet upperclassmen in a comfortable way, um, and they will be there to aid your transition through and through, whether it's inside that club or program or in the entire aspect of your whole person. You know, you mentioned right at the beginning, uh, the student involvement fair, which not to jump ahead and not to make my own uh, choice of best traditions, the first one we talk about, but that's my favorite, one, like my favorite day on campus, very early in the school year, the weather's always really nice. And the energy is so palpable of all these clubs and organizations. For a lot of times it's you guys seeing each other after summer for the first time at this student involvement fair. And it's just like the coolest event and seeing so many students proud of their organizations, whether it's a cultural organization, you know, a, a, a theater or music or dance organization, all the service clubs and what kind of great work they do. Student involvement fair by far is, is really a great way to see BC on display and what you guys do best. Um, so we may talk about that further, but uh, I put a plug in for that and only because you mentioned it, Mary. Um, last and but not least, hit and clean up is Steven. So Steven, same introduction as as everybody, but since we waited for you, we really expect you to kill it here. So. Oh gosh, Go okay. All right, my name is Steven Harrison. I am a sophomore studying math and communication in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, and I am from just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, so I hope we got some people from there. Um, in terms of what I'm involved in on campus, um, I have to say the thing that I spend the most time on, but I don't want to like make that my main thing right now um, or my last thing to talk about is the student admissions program. Probably takes up most of my time during the week, giving tours, uh, hosting panels and other uh, various things involved with that. Um, I'm involved in the Italian Culture Club. Um, I'm Italian, food is great. Um, we just had a gnocchi making event a few weeks ago. Um, and the thing that I spend uh, a lot of time on and I want to continue to spend more time on next year um, is Boston College Television uh, because uh, I'm a communication major because something that I'm looking forward, um, forward to doing in life, hopefully, um, is getting involved with um, studio television production. So I thought BCTV was a really great way to kind of uh, dip my toes in the water uh, in that realm. Um, uh, we are the student run media producing group on campus. So we'll write our own skits and bits. Um, we have a film studio and Campion Hall um, where we can record everything, which is really fun. Um, and this is actually one of my first major projects is um, editing a video that we shot on campus um, last week concerning Marathon Monday. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a small club right now, but hopefully with this leadership that we have going into next year, we can kind of grow it a little bit, have a little bit more of a name on campus, which would be a lot, which would be really nice, yeah. I like it, I like it. Steven, what's your favorite club that you're not in? Oh, what God. club do you really appreciate on campus because okay. of the activities they run or the people you know in it or what they're all about? And not to disrespect the other 352, or is that right, Mary? But um, but what what's the club that you're not in that you really enjoy uh, what they do and what they're about? 
I would say not a specific club, but like the performing arts clubs overall are all really amazing. I'm not talented enough to be a part of any of them. Like they're everyone in them is so talented. Going to Showdown and seeing everyone was so great. I just went to um, a Heitzman concert on Friday, um, which is the all male acapella group on campus. Um, if I had a great enough voice, I would wish to be a part of them, but that's a really cool group. They are really amazing. Really all the performing arts, like going to all their shows is so much fun. Um, and they're really cool clubs on campus. And that's a great way to morph into a talk, you know, to, to take a, twi- a, a quick diversion into events between concerts, dance performances, theater performances. I mean, that's kind of a weekly thing, right, Brittany? Like if you, like all the talented people, you know, like you could, you could circle these events on the calendar and you can pretty much fill a monthly calendar every weekend with one of these. And you probably get to know some of these people that are in the, I mean, your dance organization, but you know, you probably know all the talented people that are on campus. Yeah. And something I really like is how much we collaborate. So like in our, um, in our show this spring, we had two guest performances. We had the Heightsmen perform and then another hip hop team called Synergy. So like how intertwined the, not even just the dance community, but the whole like performing arts community at BC is something I've really enjoyed. Cause you, like you were saying, alluding to, you really do get to know the people in your other clubs. And it's like an, an added layer of like being in a club, it, being in that sphere of things. <laughs> Uh, and supporting them going to all their shows and all that too (laughs) right right and i mean i always see flyers being passed out or 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 you know posters being put up i mean it just seems like there's great support in the community for all of the great performers that are at boston college it's pretty cool and i always say to people that are interested you know audition audition for things when you come to campus because you know even in just the audition you meet people that are wired like you people that like to perform like to dance like to sing it's a great way to meet people even if you're still trying to figure out if you want to make that organization something that's going to be a part of your career. Um, you know, uh, Jordan, we should talk a little bit about the cultural organizations at Boston College, of which there are many, and I'm sure you've gotten to know a lot of different uh, cultural organizations throughout the campus. And for people that come from, you know, different backgrounds, it's a great way to find people that share traditions and share uh, maybe a home uh, with and, and promote a culture to a wider range of campus that may not know much about uh, someone's home culture and their traditions. Uh, you found your group right away, um, but maybe again, but through the time you've been at Boston College and the work you've done with that group, maybe you've come to understand all the different kind of mosaic of, tra- of cultural groups on campus. Yeah, for sure. I'd say there's definitely um, a big family among the culture groups, whether it's just within particular ones or just among a whole heap of them in a, on a whole. I know at some point, I, maybe typically in the spring semester, the Campus Activities Board puts on like a world fair or all the culture clubs come on and they give you a free t-shirt, which is like my favorite t-shirt. But there's so many clubs. I'm on the exec board of Caribbean Culture Club, but I'm also a general member of Armenian Club and Arab Students Association. There's the Hellenic Society, Philippine Society, South Asian Students Association, and so, so many more. Um, And what I do love about these clubs is that, for example, you don't need to be Caribbean to join Caribbean Club or to be a general member of Cape Verdean Students Association. It's all of these clubs the main thing that they promote is cultural appreciation and appreciating their culture and, you know, helping you learn about their culture. And they really, you know, they're welcoming. They collab with everybody. We were looking, um, Caribbean Culture Club was trying to plan an event and we were looking in the history of events that we've planned. And we found this like welcome back pool party from maybe 2014 where Black Students Forum, African Students Organization, Cape Verdean Students Association, Haitian Association, Dominican Association, and Caribbean Culture Club all collaborated to make this one big event. And I mean, that's only, I know Asian Caucus the other day had a big retreat with all of the culture clubs that fall under there. And I think there's just so much camaraderie and so much family among these groups, once again, whether it's within a particular one or among all of them. And that's one of my favorite things to see. 
I think what strikes people about Boston College when they start to learn about clubs and organizations is the wide number of community service organizations at Boston College. And during your, whether you're a big part of them or you've only scratched the surface or your friends are in these things, I think a lot of these organizations are well known to everybody at Boston College. We all know for Boston, we all know the Appalachia Service Group, we all know the Arupe Volunteers, uh, but the five of us know them. Would you, Mary, are any of these organizations that you're familiar with that stand out to you? Are others, you know, big brothers, big sister, are there other organizations that are devoted to service that strike you for what they do or a lot of your friends or, or even you when you were younger got very involved in these service organizations? It's funny you mentioned that because as you're asking Stephen about which organization he wishes he was a part of or one that sticks out to him, I was definitely thinking of For Boston for myself personally. Uh, my freshman year, I took a course called Pulse or Personal and Social Responsibility, and it's a philosophy and theology class with a service component. So for eight to 12 hours each week, I was going into a soup kitchen in Boston for gentlemen impacted by housing insecurity. I would get there at 5.45 in the morning. I'm no chef myself, but I would be crafting meals um, and hanging out with different guests who would come in each day. But for Boston, definitely um, uh, contributes to that same goal. I think with BC's values um, as a Jesuit institution, reflection and service definitely appear in a number of different programs, whether it's inside your coursework or outside of that. Unfortunately, the year that I did, do APA, uh, the trips were canceled due to COVID. So I was doing a local service day in Boston, but for Boston as a whole um, is an organization under campus ministry where students are paired with a community partner, which every year they join the organization and will be with that partner for the rest of their career at BC. Um, and you serve in that placement for four hours each week, as well as having a separate reflection time with your group. Uh, my friends who have been able to do for Boston have loved it um, beyond anything else at BC I think having a community with the people you're serving and everyone else who, who you get to go serve with um, is a really special element that BC adds on the front and back end so if I could go back in my BC life having taken pulse my freshman year and then be becoming a TA I wish I could have um, participated in Fort Boston for sure. Uh, Stephen, the the effect of clubs and organizations uh, is felt by everybody on campus, whether they know it or not. Um, we all get our news from the Heights mm -hmm. organization at Boston College. Uh, intramural sports, club sports. A lot of your friends, a lot of all, a lot of people. Yeah participate in intramural and club sports and ca campus and watch them and support all these endeavors. So there are a lot of things that we do on campus that whether we know it or not, uh, are you know, the direct connections to clubs and organizations. Do you, are you just a, when it comes to some like intramurals or when it comes to club sports or when it comes to the newspaper, do you find yourself following these things? Are you an active intramural athlete or do you go to club sports games? Do you find yourself involved in some of these on that periphery, these club events, and do you support them whenever you can in order to get information and, you know, get entertainment at Boston College? I'm actually so glad you asked me this question because I cannot hype up intramural sports enough here at Boston College. Um, first of all, like, there are so many different levels of sports you can get involved in here, um, the D1 sports or the club sports. If you're like me who would never make any of those teams but is super, super, super competitive. Intramural sports are your way to go. Um, actually, last night, we just had an intramural volleyball game. Um, and it is so much fun. They have four sessions throughout the year with different sports. They have pickleball, volleyball, which is volleyball in the squash court, which is, I've never heard of that before. Uh, volleyball, uh, kickball, dodge bottom, or what I've said already. But um, it's really fun because People of all skill levels can play. You get a group of your friends together to um, go and participate. Um, even some of my friends who aren't on the team went and watched us play last night, which was so much fun. Um, we, we are now 0-2 going into the playoffs, um, but that's all right. We'll, we'll, we're the underdogs, I guess, here. Um, but, yeah, there's so many um, intramural sports to get involved in. Um, 
and you mentioned the heights too. the heights um i follow the heights on instagram and that's literally how i get my bc news like that's how i learn what's going on here they post like immediately so um the heights is the um newspaper or the yeah the newspaper here on campus one of the main ones um and so yeah that's that's what i'd say about that uh, and before I, I move from organizations and talk so, about some of our traditions uh, and, and events throughout the year, I, I want to just go to, to Jordan real quick. Um, what's going on in UGBC? What's the big issue facing student government right now that you can tell us? I know that there's a lot of secret negotiations, I'm sure, behind the scenes. But what, what can you tell all of the viewers about the, the pressing issue in front of the government right now? Can we get them all to sign an NDA after this? No, I'm kidding. Uh, um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I, I honestly think the biggest thing UGBC faces is um, maybe the greater student body not really thinking that we do anything. Um, and I think that's, I mean, you go around, yeah, Campus Activities Board likes to, um, bash us when we bash and bat no but it's all love but i think the main thing is um that's probably our biggest controversy that people think we don't do much but i think we do little things in big ways um or quality over quantity maybe you know there there's certain things like i know in the past year i mean showdown is a ugbc event hana leadership council under ugbc and we put on great events such as dinner in the dark which is um, to raise awareness for like, it's the dining experience, but as, but as if you were a blind person. I know a few of the things that we are advocating for right now in the Senate are a law minor, um, a woman and gender studies major. We have worked to get a laundry subsidy for Montserrat students. We got the grocery shuttle back and running. Um, so there are a bunch of little things that we do that we advocate for throughout the years that, I mean, students could recognize us a little more, but I definitely say our biggest controversy among the student body is that they probably don't recognize anything that we do. Uh, some of this work is very thank thankless, Jordan. I, I totally understand that, but, um, but it's still very important work. So good for you to continue to do it. Um, Let's talk a little bit about some of our favorite traditions at Boston College. Uh, yeah, again, we can mark the calendar by looking at, you know, some of the things that Boston College community rallies together, organizes. Uh, I mentioned one of the first things that we do, and, and that's the Student Involvement Fair, which is the first Friday of school where I think organizations and, and uh, clubs really kick off their membership drive and put themselves out there for all the first year students that come through. Um, you know, Brittany, think about think about your you know calendar, you know your annual calendar at Boston College. I know you get to participate in the ALC showdown, which happened a couple of weeks ago. So let's put that aside because I know that would probably hold a special place in your heart. But you know, when it comes to things that you aren't as participate, you know, you're not an organized participant of something that you just like to attend, something like you be like to be a part of. What stands out as one of your favorite traditions or events at BC? Yeah, so you're right about that. Showdown is always my favorite BC tradition. Um, but I think I'd say what comes to mind initially for me and is kind of also like a, a thing I regret over my four years is like not going to more like random shows that happen on campus. Because like you said, everyone is like at tables handing you um, out flyers throughout the entire year telling you to come to their events, whether it's a culture show or uh, anything. But I got to go to um, a few of my good friends are in the Vietnamese Student Association. So I went to their culture show um, last week and I got to see some people I didn't even know who were in the club <laughs> that um, had choreographed for it. And like going to smaller events that are in um, like different classrooms and stuff are something that feel really special to me because it's you know it's people who really care about the the cause that they're like working towards and they're really excited to talk about it <laughs> with you so go to events even if you're going to go alone <laughs> i like it good advice uh steven i'll go to you when it comes to athletics um earlier in the year pat Kraft, who was our new athletic director came to speak to the tour guides and volunteers 
And we talked about the fact that the purpose of college athletics, sometimes it's just to create special moments for you during your four years of college, things that you can look back on. Uh, athletics has a lot to do with the big uh, traditions at Boston College and the big events of the year. You know, you've been here through two football seasons, two hockey seasons, two basketball seasons, uh, uh, a lacrosse season where we won a national championship for the women. Um, when it comes to these athletic events, are you a pretty ardent supporter? Or are these events that you look forward to? Do you circle these big opponents on the calendar if you want to get to these games? <laughs> How big are these events in the Boston College community? Yeah, they're a really big deal. I mean, last year, um, unfortunately, during the football season, um, COVID freshmen, they were all uh, on or televised, so we couldn't actually go into Alumni Stadium to go to these games which was so unfortunate because I had heard so many amazing things about tailgating and uh, sports events here on campus. Um, so it was a shame that we didn't get to experience that um, our freshman year. So I didn't really know what to expect coming into this year, um, but our first home football game was on uh, the first Saturday of the semester of the fall semester. Um, and I walk outside of my dorm room um, on lower campus outside of Walsh Hall um, at nine o'clock in the morning. And there are just hundreds and hundreds of people on campus in the parking lots. Parents have uh, uh, tables and food set up outside of their cars. There's moon bounces, there's food trucks. The vibe during tailgates and game days, especially football game days, electricity it's insane um and that's like literally before you even go into the game the games are fun to watch the student sections are loud uh everybody's cheering we have chants songs um there is no sitting down in the student section i quickly found out on my first game day um so in terms of football games that's something that's i that I've, I've really learned to look forward to i loved all the home football games this year um we actually have one every year called the Red Bandana Football Game, which is something that's really special here at Boston College. Um, it's in memory of Wells Crowther. Wells graduated in the 90s. Um, he was on the lacrosse team here, um, and he was most known for always wearing a red bandana. Um, he unfortunately passed away in the 9-11 attacks. Um, the story goes that his family originally didn't know what happened to him until they uh, read the newspaper and a woman said she was saved by a man in a red bandana um, and that's kind of how his family knew that he got out and he made the choice to go back into the towers to save um, more people um, so every year we have a football game to commemorate him the red bandana game his family comes out during halftime to talk it's really special the football team has some awesome red bandana jerseys um, we all get red bandanas for the game um, and it's a lot of fun and then in addition to football like all of the other sports are so much fun to go to as well. Ice hockey, I'm I'm not a big ice hockey fan in general. Um, it's, that was something new coming to New England, actually, was that ice hockey was really big. Um, and going to all their games is fun. I won't steal be someone else from talking about bean pot. They, someone else can talk about bean pot if they want to. Um, I know we, we have some traditions to go around. But yeah, sporting events here are so much fun. That's something I'd say tying in um, to what was said before. Just go to them, even if it's by yourself which it definitely wouldn't be. Everybody goes to the sporting events here. Um, just go. They're always so much fun to go and cheer on our team. Uh, thanks, Stephen. And, and Mary, you know, you, you uh, representing Campus Activities Board, that whole, the purpose of that organization is to come up with new traditions and new events and really to speak to the people and find out what are the things that students really want. So what are some of the newer events? You know, the bean pot goes back... 80 years, uh, you know, some of these other things like football goes back even longer. Um, you're, you're charged with coming up with new ideas. What are some of the more recent events at VC that you hope continue and stay? Like your organization really wants to, to, to make it a, a, a far longer traditional event at VC. We certainly try to. Um, Jordan actually mentioned an event earlier called World Fair. I was giving a tour the other day to a BC alum and I was saying, oh, it's a tradition. She's like, it didn't exist in my day. It, this year will be the third annual. So I don't know if you can exactly call it a tradition just yet. But this year we're collaborating with 21 different cultural organizations and the Campus Activities Board um, gives them some funding to showcase their culture in whatever way they see fit, whether that's with food or different games. 
giveaway items, prizes, that sort of thing. It's basically a student involvement fair specifically for the culture clubs who are interested in participating. And they line, not, not 353, but they create the, they outline, I guess, um, one of our academic quads and everybody can walk around and see all the diverse perspectives that are represented at BC. I think it's a really um, beautiful way of showcasing that, especially at a predominantly white institution. Um, Jordan loves the shirts. I love the shirts. This year, we are lucky enough to have food coming back. So I'm excited to get a taste of all the global flavors that will be represented. But I would say World Fair is one of the newer traditions that I hope continues because I think it's a very informative and educational event that um, the culture clubs are really happy to be a, uh, a part of. And I always feel like I'm going away, learning so much more about the people who surround me at BC. Uh, there are some big events on the BC calendar that haven't happened yet. Uh, one of them occurs on Monday. Uh, and it's not a BC event per se, but it's certainly uh, BC has adopted at least um, a mile of it. Uh, Brittany, why don't you tell us a little bit about what tradition is coming up in a few days? Yeah, so it's Marathon Monday. The first one, you know, we had one last semester as, the, as our makeup, but this is the first like regular Marathon Monday since before COVID. Um, big change this year is we have Jason Derulo performing in the uh, mod parking lot on Monday morning at 10 a.m. When can you say that you're going to see Jason Derulo in a parking lot at 10 a.m. on a Monday? <laughs> um, but Marathon Monday is um, everyone wakes up at like 7.30 in the morning and we all turn on the TV and like get ready to go watch um, the marathon. It's, it goes right in front of campus. So both sides of Com App or Commonwealth Avenue get filled with BC students. Some people make signs and like, I know one of my friends and her roommates are ordering like matching jumpsuits to wear. So people love to go all out for Marathon Monday to go um, support the runners, go watch them run by, go cheer them on. And it's a full day event that we get off from classes as well, which is fun. <laughs> but yeah, definitely not BC event, but very ingrained in BC's culture. <laughs> uh, what also is making a return, <clears throat> a return after two years, <clears throat> excuse me, is the Arts Fest all of these great dancers and singers that we've been talking about get to be on full display. Will Patu be participating in Arts Fest, Jordan? Unfortunately not this year. Um, I think we had something else that we're doing. Um, oh, you, but... so you got a better gig? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> a, a higher paying gig than BC Arts <laughs> Fest? Is that what you're saying? Just a little, no, I'm kidding. Um, but I do love Arts Fest. Arts Fest last year was half virtual, half in person, but I loved it. I went to as many events as I could and it was incredible. I mean, they had tents set up from the open stage, which I think was on the Saturday of the week. They had Wawa, which is like an African drumming group that we had here that I would always see them practicing. And I never knew that it was an actual BC club. I was like, oh, maybe people just come to practice here. And they were performing and they were incredible. And then that was the first time I saw BC Irish dancing, who anything they have put on ever since I have been there. Um, I am in total awe of their talent. They had Battle of the Bands, which might be separate, but there was a Battle of the Bands during Arts Fest. And I got to go and watch one of my friends who's also in a band and he performed and I think they made it to the finals. And so that was super fun to watch as well. But I think it's a great you know, just another event. And I mean, it's week, a week long that really gets the whole campus involved because there's so many different performing arts groups from dancers to singers, to people who play musical instruments and everybody's coming to support their friends or just to learn more about the performing arts community at BC. And it's definitely one of my favorite traditions. Uh, well, as time is running short here, there's still some things we didn't talk about in terms of annual events and traditions. So let's do a, a quick roundup for things that we haven't talked about yet that are traditions that we really like or events that we really like at BC. So I'll give you 15 seconds and we'll use the same alpha order that we did before. So Brittany, really quick, what haven't we talked about at BC that's one of your favorite traditions and events? I'm 
I'm thinking. <laughs> um, my mind is blank right now. Could we come back? <laughs> I feel like there's too many things over the past four years to <laughs> highlight. Fair, <more. laughs> fair. Um, Jordan. Sure, I will, I'll go with my new favorite tradition to talk about, which is the red bandana run. Um, Stephen oh, the, kind the of- The road touched, race. The road race, right. So Stephen kind of touched on the significance of the red bandana um, to Boston College earlier. But one thing we also do is a red bandana 5K run in November. And it's probably, other than Marathon Monday, the most alive you will see college students at 8.30, um, particularly on a Saturday for this run. And I signed up for the run virtually my freshman year and then in person with everybody else last year and it got up it was pretty cold and the race started and you know I gave him a head start and as we're going around and we do the 5k I see Stephen laughing already um you know we come back and I'm going and I'm ready to cross the finish line and I walk across and everybody's cheering me on I felt so loved and I go to get some water as the race is over I'm like oh this is so significant I'm so happy to have contributed to the cause and I look back and I see them taken down the finish line and I was like no, no, somebody, somebody must come in after me. And I'm walking towards the gate and I see the police officer come in on the bike, like, yeah, it's all good. And I was like, no, there's no way. <laughs> I'm walking down Calm Ave and I get the notification on my phone. And it's like, oh, despite your blazing speed, your score is in. And I was like, oh, great. Let's see how, how well I did. And then I see females aged one through 19, 202 out of 202 and I'm like oh my gosh maybe maybe it was just my age group and then and then we get to females on a whole and it was like 400 out of 400 and I'm like no maybe maybe there was like some really slow guy and then we get to overall and I see 839 and I'm like oh well I'm cool because my bib says 1006 no it was out of 839 um and this is why I say you know I love BC people I went to go meet up with a few friends and they're like but at least you got up in the morning and I'm like guys I, I came I came last and they're like no but you got up and you got out there and you did it I even checked back 20 minutes later like maybe somebody was really late and I was just the last they registered to no, know final score I was dead last um but you know everybody and everybody that I tell this story to or you know everybody on that day was so supportive and it was genuine you got up you got out there you did it and they were so encouraging and not once did they make me feel bad for being last out of 839th and I think that to me is not only a testament to I mean how much how many people participate in these traditions but also just the type of people here on BC's campus and how kind and supportive they are great story great story well done Jordan uh Mary what didn't we talk about in terms of traditions and events that we should say before the time is up no story quite like jordan's but i will say as a big summer camp messy games type of kid i was able to mention it ever so slightly earlier but my favorite campus tradition by far would have to be mud stock which is a mud volleyball tournament on the last day of classes that happens in the mod lot and the mod or the mods are these coveted senior houses where you live in an on-campus home but somehow you have a backyard which is unlike any other school, certainly at BC. Uh, but kids are just messing around like little piggies in the mud playing volleyball. There is a coveted, tr coveted trophy for the competitive bracket. And after all of that is done, as you're drenched in your mud, maybe you went to class that day, big review session. It's followed by a concert in the same space um, called Mod Stock. And in the past, we've been able to bring um, the Chainsmokers or Jeremy Zucker or B.O.B., a number of different artists. So I'm definitely looking forward to that coming back in full form um, this year and getting my hands dirty, I suppose you could say. <laughs> and uh, the performer, that information is still embargoed, right? You can't tell anybody. I know nothing. I wish I could tell you that I did and I wish I could share it with you all, but I love they, it, Mary. they keep that right from me, so. I love it, Mary. Uh, Stephen, what didn't we talk about that's important for people to know about traditions and events at BC? Okay, so I mentioned bean pot, and I was expecting someone to like kind of say it again, but like nobody really described it. So I guess I'll like talk about it a little bit. Um, so bean pot is a tradition that happens in February every year. Um, it is a four-way hockey tournament 
um, between BC, BU, Harvard, and Northeastern. Um, it happens at TD Garden, which is where the Celtics and the Bruins play. So it's super fun after your classes on Monday. It's like kind of a break from the routine. Um, all your friends will go like take the tea into the city um, and sit in TD Garden, which is so mu- so cool. It's so much fun to see like your college team playing in a massive stadium. Um, I guess m- one of the reasons why nobody talked about it yet on this panel is because we lost to Northeastern in the first round this year. Um, <laughs> but I'm so like it, it was probably one of my favorite traditions that have happened. Um, so far because we didn't get many traditions last year during COVID. So coming in here and experiencing that for the first time in February and like the dreary snowy months of February um, was so much fun. So like, I think Bee Pot's probably one of my favorites. Uh, and Brittany, did you come back to anything? Yeah, so mine is kind of niche, but it's me and my friend's favorite tradition this <laughs> this year became a new thing for us. Um, is in Fulton Hall in the business school, we have a thing called pop-up cookies. And it's once a week, we wait for our This Week in Seesaw email to find out what day of the week there's free cookies in the building. We have our Google Calendar invite that we all meet up and get our free cookies from. It's normally right before our 1.30 class. And it's quickly become my favorite thing this year because the cookies are so good. <laughs> and it's just a fun little way to like talk to the professors and everything in the um, Fulton 315, which is like the office where the dean is. <laughs> uh, cookies are always better with great conversation and no charge. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll say, I'll put a plug in for the Christmas tree lighting. My another favorite event, just, you know, right nestled in between like the end of classes, beginning of finals, usually a night where it's chilly, but not ridiculously cold. And everyone's just like having a cocoa eating cookies, singing Christmas carols and together on the quad. One of my favorites. It's great to see, it's, all, it's great to see all of you guys together as things get hectic before finals. It's, uh, and, and of course it's a nod to us and, and what our school is all about around Christmas time. So um, big nod to that. And they bring so, Santa Claus. All right. And Santa Claus, Santa, yeah. you know, Santa Claus lives in the general area. Um, I think I think the T just for that day goes up to the North Pole and gets Santa to bring him down. Uh, so look, guess what? We did it. We filled up this time with talking about some of the great organizations that comprise Boston College, how you made such great friends and great experiences, the, the events and the traditions that make our calendar complete and, uh, again, make our campus so special. Uh, I want to thank you guys for all the answers and sharing some of your experiences to my friends that are watching, the conversation can continue. Uh, my friends have put their email addresses in their camera boxes. They're happy to keep the conversations going. For some of you, you're still uh, making a final decision about where you're going to go to college. Don't sweat it. You still got about, you know, 20 days or thereabouts. No one's counting the days. Uh, but if there's any help that these guys can provide you, we do have more videos that are coming. Uh, we'll be talking about academics and study abroad and internships and research. We'll be talking about, we'll have seniors talking about, you know, their full experience at Boston College. So stay tuned as the month goes on. We'll have some other virtual panels. And if you get a chance to come to campus, you can see these wonderful people in the flesh or people just like it. If you come to see it, uh, our campus, we invite you to, to join us whenever you can. So thanks for joining us tonight. Good luck with your decision to my panel. Well done. And thanks so much. Uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.